I got early access to Pico 1.0 and I've been playing around with it this weekend. So I wanted to tell you the five things that I thought were interesting and kind of deep dive on them. So um, I'm gonna talk about the interface, how you can modify a region, how you can expand a video, how you can extend a clip and change the camera over time. And we'll look at this thing called text consistency and how that will affect the final output, even if you use the same prompt in the same seed. All right, this is Pico 1.0. Um, when you log in, you go to the Explore page. All of these clips here are not clips that I've done. These are clips that just show up on the Explore page. You'll also have your own My Library page. You can go there um, for the clips that you generate. or that's When you generate a clip, that's also where um, the generations happen. These pretty intuitive buttons here. So you have a Retry button, which is basically just going to take the same prompt here and retry it. Um, you have a Reprompt button, which will let you change the prompt. And then you have this edit button, which allows you to reframe or add things to the video itself without the prompt. So let's just try each of those really quick. So first thing we'll do is we'll just click retry. It's gonna pop us over here. Um, now we'll click reprompt. And then instead of photogrammetry, we'll just say 3D animation style um, and hit enter or star. And now for me, the interesting one, let's click edit. Um, so it keeps the same prompt here, the original prompt. Um, but then you have these two buttons, modify region and expand canvas. So modify region is where you can um, change a specific part of it. We're gonna add this part. So wearing aviator sunglasses, we're gonna modify that region and then we're gonna go. Now it's generating that. So in the retry example, it just used the same prompt um, and we got a completely different result. Then when we tried the reprompt one, we just changed it to 3D animation style. It looks like this, this looks really weird. I tried um, gaming style as well and it looks like this. It does look like an old video game kind of. But then I think what's kind of cool is when we did the, um, when we did the edit and we added sunglasses, this is what you end up getting. So the cool thing about this is that um, we can hit edit again it brings the sunglasses down here and now we can modify region again and instead of this armor let's just say that we want to um, have a denim jacket maybe let's go up a little bit make sure that we're covering the whole area the whole time all right wearing sunglasses if you're sunglasses and a denim jacket and enter um, i was also curious about this because this is you know you're adding things onto the prompt Let's try this where we highlight the region and just say a denim jacket. Both prompting styles added a denim jacket. So in this one, we used the full prompt and added a denim jacket. And in this one, we just said a denim jacket and both of them gave her a denim jacket. We're adding things to her. She's already in the scene. So we can add sunglasses to her or add a jacket. Just out of curiosity, I wanna see how easy it is to add something new to the scene. So I'm gonna click edit again. I'm gonna modify the region. Let's just say, um, we'll get rid of the whole prompt and we'll just say, a flying dragon in the distant sky. There might be a better way to prompt this, I'm not sure, but I'm just gonna try that. Let's just do another one too that says, the sun shining behind clouds, which might be a little bit easier because there's terrain in the sky. So let's try that one too. Okay, so it was not successful with the dragon and that, you know, that may be too much to ask. Maybe this is better for like adding things to people because it kind of, I mean, it, it did a little better with the sun, but um, but it's not as good as giving her a denim jacket and sunglasses based on the original. Okay, now we're gonna reframe a clip. I could just click edit on this one, but I'm gonna click retry so I get my own version. All right, this is our DC Marvel superhero in the middle of the street. I like this one better if I'm being honest. This is where it gets really fun to generate things because you look at this and you're kind of like, oh, that's cool, but like you wanna see more and now you can be like, oh, I, I can see more. So I'll click edit. I'll expand the canvas. I'm gonna push him up there. I should go, let's, let's see a lot more of him. So let's go like that. Maybe we can get a little headspace up there. Um, and then we'll enter. So now let's see what happens if we expand this one. Okay, so. <laughs> All right, so here's our superhero. Um, maybe we tried to extend him too much. So let's, let's do this. Let's uh, edit him again. Let's expand the canvas. This time, let's just go like this. Let's just do a one by one and let's extend little bits at a time, right? Okay, okay. So it kind of knows what to do with that one. So let's edit again, expand canvas. Let's just keep going larger, right? Four by five, let's do that. Let's just do little bits at a time. Let's expand it. And then I would do 
Well, let's do a comparison. I'm going to do a nine by 16 with this one by one that we did. And then I'm going to do another one with the four by five that we just created. He's, um, he's extremely barrel chested. So this was the nine by 16. And this is the four or five. So this is, you know, I, I think when you expand little bits of a time, it's better if I had to, well, let's see. So this is what we were going to test, right? And so now let's go edit, expand canvas. And we're going to go nine by 16. All right. So, I mean, this isn't like amazing, but this is way better, much more proportional than last time. So if you want to go from like a 16 by nine close up like this to a portrait mode nine by 16 like this, and you just want to use the expand canvas, um, I think it works better if you do it in increments. So go like one by one or four by three, and then and just slowly do it um, one at a time. It seems like that does better than if it has too much area um, to expand to, it just gets confused and doesn't really know what to do. Unless this is what you're going for. Like maybe you're going for this look. And then, so in that case, start with the smallest one and expand to the biggest one. One thing I want to look at is this consistency with text option. Um, so we can copy this prompt and the same exact seed. So I'm going to copy the seed here and I'm just going to go reprompt. So it puts that prompt down here. Um, I'm going to go down here to parameters. Now I can put the same seed in there and we're going to do two things. We're going to do consistency with text five, and then we're going to do it again with 25. So th what this basically means is it's going to, um, it's going to try to follow this as strictly as possible. And I think the original one was 12. So we started with 12, we're going to bump it down to five and then we'll do 25. So basically what it is, is this will look more accurate to what we're saying here. And the 25, we're giving the AI some creative license to go do whatever it wants to do. Um, so we'll see the difference with those in a second. So all of these use the same exact prompt, but the consistency with text is different. So in this case, he's muscular for a raccoon, but he's not like totally ripped, you know? Um, that If you saw a raccoon that looked like that, that would be terrifying. So it's, it's a muscular raccoon, very much like a bear. So it's, staying really close to what you said. And now in this one, we're like, hey, just go for it. Like be creative. And now, <laughs> it's almost like the before and after in the gym. This is like before he got started, then he started doing like steroids and just going a little crazy. Um, and this is what he turned into. So you, you can really see the progression between the, uh, the five, the 12 and the 25. There's um, same prompt, same seed, wildly different um, images. The next thing I want to try is extending a clip and I want to change the camera motion every time I add four seconds to it. So I have the ability to add four seconds to the clip on their home page here. So rather than, you know, retry, reprompt or editing that, I'm just going to click this three little dots here, click add four seconds. Um, and then if I go here to camera control, I can see what their initial camera control was. So it was initially panning right and you can kind of see that the camera was panning right. So I'm going to uncheck that and I'm going to zoom out. So since they already did the pan, we'll do one with a zoom, one with a rotate and one with a tilt. Um, so first we have to do the zoom out. So click the X there um, and go. So I have to wait for this one to generate before I can add four more seconds. So you start with a three second clip and then you add four seconds, wait for that one to generate, add four seconds, wait for the, that one to generate and then add four seconds again. So you have to be patient. All right, let's take a look at this one. So now we're zooming out. Okay, now we're gonna add four seconds again to the that clip. We're gonna go down here to camera control again all right, so we zoomed out, so we're going to uncheck that. And now we're going to tilt down. We'll see what's further down in that room and click generate. So we've got our zoom out and now we should pan down. All right, and then we're going to add four more seconds. This is, I th this is our final four seconds that we get. Let's add two camera motions actually. So let's go rotate and zoom out even more. I feel like when you extend a clip, it starts to lose coherence after like the second or third try. 
I've never seen one that still looked good at 15 seconds long. So here's a thought. I'm just going to try to extend a clip, but I'm not going to do any camera movement. I'm wondering if the camera movement is messing it up too. So I'm just going to add four seconds and I'm going to go to the camera motion and I'm going to turn that off. So I'll keep motion. I'm not going to change that motion, um, but I'm not going to have any camera motion. So let's see what happens if I extend this one the same amount. And I did another one where all I'm going to do is zoom out each time. Right, that's one where I zoomed out. You start to see another character there. Not sure how that happened, but we're going to extend it and see what happens next. For this one, let's just keep zooming out. All right, here's the zoom out one. That was actually pretty cool. So I, I take back what I said about I've never seen an extended clip work out. That's like a magical story. I feel like she's being confronted by some people and magically produces a sword. There was nothing in my prompt that told it to do that. It just kind of created that story. So that was cool. So there's that hand. What's that hand all about? So the one where we added a lot of motion, but no camera movement, it really, it literally got dark. Like nothing, nothing happened from it. I don't know if other people have that experience. If you, if you don't move the camera, but you just keep extending it, but it just didn't really know what to do with it in this case. So there are some ways that you can extend the three second clips up to 15 seconds long. So Pico one, I love it. It's super fun. It's got a great interface. You know, I, I like how simple they're making it. I love like going back to a couple things. Like I love this, like where it just shows you the different, if you're going to retry, it's just going to show you the different variations and you can pick the one that you want. Um, it's really easy to edit the videos and to modify a region or expand the canvas and pick which aspect ratio you want. I don't think that people are going to be making movies in the same way in the future. I think they're going to be generating stuff like this, like super short clips that you watch. You know, they make it really easy. So you, you click the share button and you can share it. You know, you should be able to share it to more than Twitter and Facebook. Um, but it is cool that they have that. Or you can just copy a link and, and post it to wherever you want to post it. Being able to generate some really fun clips like this and have an easy way to share them. Um, it's going to really help the adoption. It, it speaks to the fact that I feel like they're trying to do stuff that is fun for social. It's really interesting to see the approach that Pika is taking with 1.0. And um, I don't know. Let me know what you think.